first thing for me, when you want to change something, the, mo the most important thing is understanding why. So I used to work for like a GP referral system uh, scheme, and basically what we would do is we'd get people sent to us. So I was a trainer at the time, like I am now. We'd get someone sent to us, and they'd be sent through the GP, so it could be for any reasons, obesity, high blood pressure, um, could, could be absolutely anything. But what we used to get is we used to get people that would just come in just to tick a box, basically. So I'd always try to find out their reason for being there. When I asked the question, literally nine times out of ten, people would just say, oh, because the doctors sent me. But there was this one guy who was about 70, 80, about, about seven, early 70s, and I'll never forget what he said. And he said, the reason I'm here is because I want to see my grandchildren. I want to live longer to see my grandchildren, like, live. And I thought, what's a more important why than that? So the reason why you need to know your why is that those days where you don't want to do the things that help you, think back to that why. And, that, and honestly, that's the most important thing. There's no point in me giving this information if you don't know deep down why you need to actually implement it. So this applies to everything. Think about it. Um, like, why do you want to improve your sleep? How will this impact your life, but also how will it impact the other people, other people around you? So, um, wife, husband, partner, children, work colleagues, how will it impact their lives as, as well? You being, um, having a better night's sleep. Um, but also, what happens if you don't change as well? What happens if you don't implement anything and your sleep doesn't improve? You probably haven't got a bad sleep. You probably just, you, you might just be interested in just learning how you can make it be better. You might be um, a parent that's got young children or just ch children in general and you really struggle with sleep. You might have high stress levels, you might be shift workers. So I'm guessing everyone's coming from a little bit of a different angle. But when you go home today, just try and think what is your real reason why for wanting to improve your sleep. Um, and this is, so this is a question I'm going to ask. Is, there's no right or wrong, to be honest. I think from my experience and from what the reading I've done and just from my own knowledge, I think I know the reason, um, like, when does a good night's sleep start? So just out of interest, so when does, a, when, when does a good night's sleep start? Does it start in the morning or does it start in the evening? So just show of hands in the morning. Who thinks a good night's, a good night's sleep will start in the morning? That's a really run, weird question, that, isn't it? It sort of makes sense. Um, so, and then, so the others, who, so the other people think that you get, your good night's sleep starts in the evening. There's no right or wrong, uh, it's just the way that you see things, but I'll, we'll, once I've gone through this information, you might find it, the answer a bit clearer. So, circadian rhythm, has anyone heard of this? I had to spell check that about 15 times to make sure I spelled that right. Um, but basically, like, this is your body clock. So, this is how your body works. So there's two things that affect your sleep. There's one thing is called sleep pressure, and this is basically to make you sleep. So this is something that should naturally build up over the day. A, a chemical called adenosine and a hormone called melatonin is what makes you feel sleepy. Um, and then with a good night's sleep, this should clear so that in the morning you don't feel sleepy, and then gradually throughout the day, your sleep pressure should increase so that in the evening you fall asleep. That's an ideal world. That's how it should work. Um, and the, the second thing at play is stress hormone. So this is basically what wakes you up. So it's good. To, it's natural to have like an acute bit of stress. It's not normal. It's not okay to be stressed all the time. But it's good to have like an acute bit of stress because it is really important for us. Um, but this is something that should start high in the morning to wake you up. Um, cortisol, which is the stress hormone, will release into your body. It'll increase your blood pressure. That's what the BP is and it, it'll, it'll increase your blood sugar levels so that it wakes you up ready to go first thing in the morning. Um, and then gradually throughout the day, like it should, just, it should gradually release, um, like go down to sort of baseline level your, um, your stress hormones. So these are the two key things. Sleep pressure, naturally it should be super low in the morning and gradually build up in the evening. Um, and then blood pressure, or sorry, stress hormones, which is related to your blood pressure and blood sugar levels, this should start high in the morning and then gradually go down to like a base level line, like a base level um, throughout the day. <laughs> I actually made this, by the way. I was literally like trying to do it perfectly. I couldn't find anything online that sort of explained how I wanted to explain it. Um, but you'll see here, I've said, this is how like a circadian rhythm should look. Like this is in an ideal world. Where, so, that, so the red line is um, basically like your stress hormone. So first thing in the morning, maybe around like six, half six, it'll be a lot higher, blood sugar will go up, um, blood pressure will go up, and that's what wakes you up ready for the day. 
and then it'll gradually come back down, and again, it just sort of goes off to a baseline level, and again, when it comes back round to sort of about 6 a.m. again, it should shoot back up and then go again. Um, so this is over a 24-hour period, by the way, so this is like a, a body clock. Um, and then sleep pressure, so to make you feel sleepy, this is the adenosine, which is the, um, the, 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 the brain chemical, and this is melatonin, which is a hormone. So basically, this should start super low in the morning and then shoot up to make you feel tired in the evening. I've just thrown out a load of words at people. Does anyone want to ask a, a question on that, by the way? Does, does, you can just nod your head. Does that make some sense? So that's sort of how it should look throughout the day. We're going to have a look at how it normally looks now. <laughs> yeah. So this, so this is how most people's day tends to look, where... Um, so, do you know what? It's literally the opposite, isn't it? Most people tend to wake up early, let's just say between, let's just say six and seven, wake up tired. Anyone wake up tired? Yeah. <laughs> All the parents like, yeah, definitely. Um, so you're waking up tired. So it basically means that your sleep pressure is high in the morning. That's why like, when you wake up, you just want to keep snoozing and snoozing and snoozing. And then you wake up and you know you have to get up by that last one. And you just feel like crap by that point. So that mean, that's because you're tired. Um, and then gradually, you probably had a coffee by now, so your blood sugar's gone up, your blood pressure's gone up, you probably had some breakfast, so it means that you're, you are feeling a little bit more awake, but then what happens after that? Crash back down a straight, a straight away. Um, so again, you feel, so you feel, um, so it crashes back down, and then you should feel super tired then by that point. And again, you go back up, 3 p.m., your sleep pressure's gone up, so you feel tired, groggy, drowsy again. And it's just, it, this can be down, this, this is what I'm saying, when does a good night's sleep start? For me, it starts first thing in the morning. Like, to, like, there's a saying which is like, win the day, win the morning. If you can get like, really organized in the morning, it really does set you up for a good day. Um, Whose who's day tends to look like that, by the way? <laughs> Probably a little, some more in there. Just uh, that, yeah, that is literally your circadian rhythm. Um, but yeah, so, so that tends to be how most people's day goes. And then what happens is, you get, let's just say it gets around to about 10 o'clock, you feel wide awake, your head just feels wired, you're thinking all these things, and you're lying in bed, and you're just literally like that, staring at the, like, staring at the ceiling. And this is, this is what tends to happen for most people. So like, is, this is absolutely a normal thing. Like I say, I'm not telling you this information as like a sleep expert. I had a pretty poor night's sleep last night. Um, but what I'll go through is just like some little things that can help you throughout the day. Um, this will be an interesting bit. So, why? Why, why does this happen? Um, this tends to happen because we have interrupted sleep. We have parents in the room, young children, dogs. It could be absolutely anything. Um, so you have interrupted sleep, so it makes you feel groggy. Um, lack of daylight. I know, obviously, we live in the north of England. We live in England. We don't really get any sun as it is anyway. So we get a lack of daylight. Too much caffeine. Yeah. Coffee is really good. There's caffeine in, I'm gonna go through that actually anyway. Um, stressful job, so it means like literally your blood pressure's going up and then it's going down, you feel like you're just getting, it's just a stressful job that you have. Um, alcohol is the other thing. Like I used to, um, like when members say, oh I had a few drinks last night, I used to joke about it. Now I've got a little bit more serious on it now and said like, alcohol is a bit of an issue. Um, like I drink, I'll be drinking this Saturday, but it's, it's how much you drink and I'm gonna go into each of these as well. Um, and a lack of physical exertion. When you first joined Benchmark and you did your first few sessions, how, did you, how was your sleep going from not exercising to exercising? Loads better, wasn't it? Loads better. But the reason I've said lack of physical exertion is when I, when I say physical exertion, I mean like walking, movement, walking upstairs, gardening, all these different things that exert our body. Training in the gym is just part of it. So we can't just rely on the gym just to help us feel, just to help us go to sleep. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, like I said, um, your interrupt to sleep can come from kids, dogs, just noises, like thoughts as well. And I was listening to a podcast as well. It's like, and he was saying about how basically when you're lying in a dark room and you've got nothing to keep you busy, that's when all your thoughts come to your head because you've got nothing to distract you. Um, I, I've started doing a bit of journaling, um, just like day to day, what, like writing down the things on my mind or writing down the things that I've got going on or stuff like that. I found that's really helped with that because basically it just gets all the thoughts out of your head and it puts it on a piece of paper. Does anyone actually do that now? Yeah. 
Yeah? Yeah. Amazing. Exactly. You think of the best night days like three o'clock in the morning. You don't want to look at your phone at that point. So, so yeah, um, journaling I find is really, really, it's been really, really helpful. Um, lack of daylight. Does anyone here, I, right, so yeah, let's just flip back to this. So a lack of daylight comes down to the fact that um, like you are just feeling tired in the morning. Can you really be asked to go outside for a walk? You can't. You, you've got just about enough energy to get the kids ready, maybe have some breakfast, get on time to work. Like you've just got enough energy to do that. Do you really want to go for a walk? And it, the, obviously we need to sort of change this a little bit, but that's why there's a lack of daylight. It's because you're tired and you, just, you probably just haven't got the energy to go out for a walk. Um, so that's why there's a lack of daylight. Caffeine, if I, if I was to generalize for absolutely everyone, I'd say most people drink too much coffee. Um, coffee, tea, I mean, there's very tiny amounts of, um, very, very tiny amounts of um, caffeine in like chocolate, really small amounts. But all these little bits do make a big, like a difference over a day. Um, but basically the way it works is that caffeine literally halts, like it literally slows down your sleep pressure. So that's why when you have a coffee, you feel amazing off it because you no longer feel groggy. But then what happens after the coffee is that you crash down and then this sleep pressure increases, so you feel drowsy, you feel tired. Then what do you do? You go for a chocolate bar, you go for another coffee, and that's where that cycle comes around. <laughs> you can see someone smiling as I'm saying that. Um, but it's important that you know these things. Like, we know these things, but when it's actually written down, it's like, yeah, this actually happens. That's when you think, that's when you think right, I actually need to do something about this. Um, but ca ca coffee, I would just say, is absolutely amazing for you. It's one of like, the most powerful antioxidants you can ever have. It's really, really good for you. Um, but it's all the other sort. Ca and caffeine has got some benefits. Coffee is where the benefit It's just that caffeine is in coffee, if that makes sense. Um, but obviously, it's all the other caffeine drinks as well that will have a massive effect. Um, but yeah, basically, coffee will be what, let's, let's call it caffeine, let's not call it coffee. Caffeine is going to be the thing that knocks your sort of body clock out of sync, because who here, who here has one coffee a day? You actually do? I have about two. Two coffees? Three? Four? Five? Go on, you're, you're a nurse, Penny. You've got to be like ten coffees, surely. Um, one is a... One big, yeah, one like this big, yeah. That <laughs> fair enough, that makes sense then. <laughs> Sip it all day. Um, yeah, so coffee, coffee, coffee is really, really beneficial. It's got a lot of powerful uh, antioxidants to it, um, but it's the caffeine that's the issue. Um, stressful job, like feeling stressed all day, like literally just feeling on edge all day, feeling stressed all day. Then when you get to bed, you're just wired and your head's just like absolutely like vibrating. The last thing you want to do then is try and like, like come down and slow down after that. Alcohol, yes. Right, so... Again, I am not judging anyone. I drink, and like, I'm not saying don't drink. I'm just saying, just be aware of what you're actually drinking. So um, we, we tend to drink because let's, in the week it's because we are tired and alcohol makes us feel sleepy. But all alcohol is doing is it is literally just sedating you. So if you have like a couple of glasses of wine, yeah, you'll feel tired, but all it'll do is it'll just help you go to sleep but then it will reduce you, the actual quality of your sleep. So it means in the morning, you wake up feeling worse. Um, so yeah, so yeah it, it helps you to go to sleep, but it reduces the actual quality of your sleep. So this is gonna blow your mind. So one glass of my, like, so a low amount, like one glass of wine on average, reduces your sleep quality by 9%. Two glasses of wine, so like a moderate drinker, 24%. This is scientific research, I'm not just pulling these figures out by the way. Um, and then high amounts, so about, that's just three glasses of wine, maybe two pints of beer, 39% it can reduce your quality. That's literally nearly halving your sleep. So imagine you do that three nights of the week, that's nearly half of your week just being obliterated with alcohol and the sleep quality just going down. Um, like, has, has anyone seen those numbers before? When I learned about them, I was like flipping it like it's crazy. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a beer. Like, I'm all for it. And having a social occasion, I'm all for it. But if you are having a glass of wine or a beer to help you relax and go to sleep, that's when it's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, and, and then, yeah, lack of, like, physical exertion. So just, like, a sedentary lifestyle. Um, does anyone, I mean, I guess most people do track their steps. That, for me, that is just, like, a really simple way of... Um, like knowing how active you are. 
But the other thing like is just like going out on longer walks, like being consistent with your training. Everyone knows how, everyone knows how, um, how beneficial exercise is for your sleep and like, physically coming into the gym and exerting yourself. So if you know how important it is and you know how much it benefits your sleep, make sure you do it. Like really make sure you keep coming in. Um, I know if I've not been to the gym for a week, I feel stressed, I feel like lethargic, I feel tired, my sleep gets worse. So it's like, I have to go to the gym because it will improve the quality of my sleep. Because um, you know, like benchmark, we're not about like as much as your, a body transformation, we are very much about like a mental transformation, a physical, like a, like a lifestyle transformation as, a, as opposed to like just looking different. We want to change how you actually feel. Um, so yeah, like these are these are basically all different all different sort of angles you could come out of improving your sleep, and I'll, I'll I'll do like some final points at the end. But these like different angles of like why sleep can be so um, poor. Uh, so this this is something I learned about when I went to this uh, fitness expo a few a couple months ago, which is something called a Zeitgerber. I have literally never ever heard of it whatsoever. But basically, it's something that just starts your body clock. So sunlight. Food, drink, exercise. Uh, th this, should this should actually be temperature. So either like caught or caught hold, hot or cold. Um, so it's t uh, I should really put temperature there. Um, and also social interaction as well. So um, again, I'm not saying that you have to come into the gym first thing in the morning, but when you come into Benchmark, you're getting sunlight, you'll be getting, some, you'll be getting drink, you'll be exercising, you'll be getting in the winter, you'll be getting some cold exposure. <laughs> Um, but, the, but you'll be getting social interaction as well. So like, when you do physically come into the gym, it's going to help you sleep better at night. Um, and I'm not, I, I don't want you to think, I know a lot of you have just trained now. I don't want you to think because you've trained now, it's going to affect your sleep. It's not. It's going to play a big role in it. It's just that if you can do some of these things first thing in the morning, it is really going to improve your sleep. Um, and for a lot of you, again, I keep saying it, I know a lot of you are parents, and I know like, your day is already quite stressful, and you need, you'll be out, you're literally like, out of bed, sort the kids out, get them to school, get to work, all those things. But then just ask yourself, how, how often do you actually give time to yourself? Like, how often do you actually fill your cup up before you fill the kids' cup up and everything else? Like, how often do you make time for yourself? And it is really important um, that you do, <laughs> simple as that. I know obviously kids, family life, it does take over, but it comes to a point where you do have to put yourself first to benefit everyone else as well. Um, has anyone actually like put any of these things into place over the last sort of few months, changed anything at all? Yeah, and you find that it just sort of changes how you feel. Oh, it makes such a difference. It, That's the thing, and like you've done a couple of them first thing in the morning. So yeah, going out for like it literally doesn't have to be an hour walk. It could be like a 15-minute walk easily first thing in the morning. There you're gonna get some exercise, you're gonna get some sunlight, having some water, you're gonna get a drink. So it's like you're sort of doing all these things at once. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so these are basically things that start your body clock. And the interesting thing is how many of those things you do last thing at night as well. So maybe not the sunlight, but light, like watching TVs, being on your phone, um, probably like the two main ones. Food and drink, who tends to eat, quite, like my, so Fleur, when she comes home from work, she could come home at like nine o'clock, so we, we can sometimes eat at nine o'clock. And honestly, that's the worst thing for me, for my sleep when I eat super late. Um, so like eating last thing at night, because it just sits there and you lie in, but also like it's waking your body up to try and digest all the food as well. Um, exercise, let's not touch on that because that's super important. So here's just a few like sort of simple point, um, like quick pointers really. So <clears throat> sunlight, literally 10 minutes early morning, like, and just reduce the amount of light in the evening. Th this, this for me is just like a really like quick um, morning routine that could take about 20 minutes. So 10 minutes early morning and then try and reduce the amount of light in the evening. Um, food and drink, so last, like, I'm terrible for this, I know I am. And I'm not saying you have to get perfect to all, all these things, I'm just trying to like, find ways you can improve it. Um, last main meal, two to three hours before you go to sleep. The reason why I said last main meal is because, like you say, if you do train at 6.30 or 7.30, you might have had a bigger meal in the day and then in the evening have like a lighter meal that's not as heavy. Um, no caffeine after 12 p.m. Who drinks caffeine? <laughs> I don't, literally, my uncle. 
My uncle does that. He has like a double espresso before he goes to bed. I just... No, what's that? You'll find it for me. I just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you wake up groggy. Yeah. Yeah. The, to be fair, that's one thing I'm not touched on in, in here is like sleep hygiene. And sleep hygiene is like some of the really key things is having a cool bedroom. Who has a warm bedroom, by the way? A cool bedroom is really, really important. Like you might think... You might, you might think warmth is more comforting, but a cold bedroom is really, really important for a good night's sleep. Oh, like this, yeah, shaking under it. Um, what was the other thing? So it's a cold bedroom, um, darkness, which sounds quite obvious, but how often do you sleep with like light, like little like lights like this in the house? It's not gonna make a massive difference, but it's little things like this. Or I, to be fair, I sleep with like my blinds about that much open so that I wake up with the dark daylight in the morning. It drives you mad. No, I, so, but if I want a good night's sleep, it's like blinds fully down, like, and I, I'll go into the other room and um, do like blackout blinds, and I get such a better night's sleep, it's just that it's a bit harder to wake up in the morning. But yeah, sleep hygiene is like um, a cool room, a dark room, and yeah, no lights. They're like really, like probably two simple things, because um, it's just relaxing. Uh, exercise, so to be fair, I touched on that one in there. So 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the, in the, warning, in the morning. The, basically, the routine that I do is I'll get up, have a, literally a two-minute cold shower, I go for a 10-minute walk around the block, have a coffee, bang, done. 15 minutes. See you later, Kate. Um, 15 minutes, that's it. Like, I used to say, you, you've probably seen the videos that I've done in the past, I used to take the mick out of people that did morning routines. When I realized how good they were, I slowly regretted it because it is really important because it sets you up for a really good day. Uh, it sets you up for a good day. And, it, and if you can do something that like, sets you up well and then if you have, have any stress or stuff throughout the day, you can probably handle it a little bit better. Um, again, it could be temperature exposure, but not many people have a sauna in the house. Um, so I've just put cold exposure. And you don't, does anyone do cold showers? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that. No, cold showers are really good. You could do um, even even if it's just on your face, it'd make a big difference. Yeah, honestly, don't don't complain to me though if it's freezing. And um, and then the other thing is um, like say social interaction. So can you interact with a family member? And obviously, if you're tired in the morning, you can't really be bothered to talk to people. <laughs> Uh, but can you interact with a family member, a friend, or a colleague in the morning that's just going to make you feel good? It could eat. Oh yeah, that's true. And yeah, it's fine. Cats are very. Cats only want feeding though. Dogs are actually a bit. Dogs actually are loving. Is it not true? <laughs> My cats have just only ever wanted food. Um, but yeah, you're right. Dogs. Oh, sorry, cats aren't you? Yeah. Um, or even just the radio, something that actually just makes you feel good in the morning. Um, and I've just answered this question, I should have really. But yeah, basically, I said it for it anyway. For me, like, winning the morning is the best way to start the day. If you can have a really good start to the morning, like, get up, get up, early. again, I'm not saying when to get up, but try and get up a little bit earlier, try and go for a walk, try and get some sunlight, something that's just gonna boost you, you might tend to see that you'll see an improvement in the evening. So for me, like, a good, um, a good night's sleep starts in the morning, like, for me anyway. But again, you could meditate in the evening, something that actually relaxes you, and you have a great night's sleep, then you feel great the next day. Like it's, but for me, like I focus on having a really good morning, and I tend to have a better evening um, sleep. So, final points, what time is it? Oh, look at that, 25 minutes flew through that. <coughs> um, so, final bit then. Oh yeah, this is a good point. So, like understand what it, is, it, what it is that actually triggers like a bad night's sleep or, or just, oh yeah, I've written there. So um, <laughs> understand what it is that triggers, triggers poor sleep, poor sleep. <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> it must have been, it must have been a bad night's sleep when I wrote this together. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so is it, like, is it too much caffeine or is it too much alcohol? Is it not enough exercise? 
Um, is it lack of routine? So like in the morning, is it a lack of a routine? Is it high stress levels? Is it a la yeah, lack of routine in the morning? I think with this one, what I meant was um, a lack of routine of when you go to bed in the evening. Like do people go, and obviously if you've got kids, it's like it could be absolutely any time, but do people have, anyone here have like a set time when they try and go to sleep? Kind of, yeah. If it's, for so, yeah, for some people it could be all over the place. Um, but that's another thing, like, is if, if it's just a lack of routine of what time you're trying to go to sleep. Because the, the thing is, like, your body wants to get into a routine of going to sleep. If you're going to sleep one night at nine, and next time at 11, I know it's, and, and I know it is hard with kids and, fam like, family life and stuff, I know it is, but I've, I'm, getting into a routine is what's probably going to, like, help sleep as well. Um, like, is there a lack of daylight? So I think for you, you've got to decide like which one of these is important. There's no point in me saying everyone stop drinking coffee after 12 because you might not drink coffee anyway. You've got to decide like looking at some, those for me are probably like the main triggers for um, for like poor sleep. So you've got to sort of look at them and think right which one of these like actually applies to me. Um, and I just said here like choose one and create a habit to tackle it and then make the habit a routine and just keep working at it. So by this, what I mean is. If you've got high stress levels and you know that's the thing that triggers you and you just literally knackered in the evening and you can't like properly go to sleep. Well, in fact, no, you'll just be tired all day, won't you? And you can't properly go to sleep. Then it's looking, right, well, how can I try and... You're never going to just get rid of your stress levels. Like, they're always going to be there. But it's how can I manage it a little bit better? What can I do to manage it? Um, is, it too is it too much caffeine? And like, am I, am I drinking a coffee at three o'clock because I'm so tired and I'm trying to like stay awake? Um... So if it, was, if it was the coffee at three o'clock, can I just not have that coffee? Is like, do, people, do people drink coffee for the caffeine or do they drink it for the taste? I'm like a bit of, yeah, a bit of both really, yeah. Um, so it could just be, you could probably just have decaf as well and you probably won't even realize, you won't notice the difference. Um, but what's really important when you're trying to create a habit, a routine, is that you just, you, you choose the simplest habit to do. Like, don't choose a habit for every single one of these things and then try and do it because you're not going to do it. What's really important is decide which one of, the, which one of these is the one thing that you think is, is affecting your sleep and choose one thing to try and improve it. So if it's a lack of daylight, don't go say it and I'm going to go for an hour's walk every single morning because that's just not going to happen. Just literally say, Can, I'm going to go for 10 minutes every day and then try and go right. At some point, I'm going to try and go for 15 minutes or even 11, 12 minutes. But try and just find like the simplest thing you can work on and just stick to it as much as possible. The way I sort of see habits is like, it's like a never ending game of football for me, but at some point the game is gonna end and you wanna make sure that you're winning all the time. So if, if every single day that you're sticking to the, I've started flossing recently actually, my teeth by the way, before you <laughs> saw you then. Yeah, no, that was, that was, that was just a dance move that. Um, but like even those days when I really don't want to do it, I'm just like, I've got to do it. <laughs> it's not the dance moves. Um, but even those days when I really don't want to do it, I just think, no, I don't want to be defeated by it because if one day will turn into two days, three days, and it's just stopped. So what's really important is you just do it. But the only way you're going to do it is by picking something that's really, really simple. If you choose something like sleep, like going for an hour's walk, you're not going to do it because it's too, it's too much to try and do. Just literally say... I'm going to go for 10 minutes every day and just stick to it, stick to it, stick to it. Um, and even on the days where you really don't want to, just go back to the why and, and why you want to improve your sleep and it will make you stick to it. The, the, the thing when people try and, choose, um, try and create a habit is they just don't give it enough time. Like they don't stick to it long enough for it to actually settle in and become part of the routine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that, and that, that's another thing as well. Is like, it's never... just. just I think this is more reassuring than anything, is that it will never, ever be fully resolved. It's something that you've got to always, always be working at. It's like, it's like a relationship with a partner. It's never like, oh, it's just perfect, that's what it's going to be. Like, it's just something you've got to be constantly working at. Oh, it's, everyone's laughing. Why are you laughing? Am I giving relationship advice? Yeah. But it's just, but it is, but I think then, because like, we, we try and look for perfection all the time and there's no such thing as perfection. All we're trying to do is just try and be consistent. You're going to have days where you don't want to do it. You don't want to go for a walk. You really want that coffee at three o'clock, but you know it's going to make you sleep really bad. Um, but just understand that it takes time and it's something that's just never fully resolved and you've just got to constantly keep working at it. 